Hi folks. This video is just a short one for clinicians and I want to update you on where we're at with the uh, generative AI space for science and scholarship and evidence-based care. Basically where we're at is open evidence is your best option at the moment. So this is just a short video showing you how you could use this in your clinical practice. Um, so I'm going to screen share and Right, so you see I've just put open evidence into Google. I click on this button here. And if you're in America, it's going to take you to America. If you're in the UK, it'll take you there. In Australia, it's going to take me to this one. And I'm in Australia. So uh, so that's the first bit sorted. Now, you can pop in three questions into this um, Gen AI for free without having to sign up or even log in each week. That's how things are at the moment. If you want to do more searches than that, then you're going to need to log in. And if you need to log in, then you're going to have to provide a photo ID so that they know it's an actual human um, clinician uh, or student. So um, you'll need to provide them with those details. It took me less than 60 seconds to achieve that so it's not onerous in any kind of way by the way the peeps that set this platform up are the mayo clinic the new england journal and the JAMA. so um, you're going to get that top tier evidence that we're looking for this has a lot of capabilities in it you can ask any question here and also uh, there are more capabilities. There are asking tough questions, treatment alternatives. You can look at hierarchy of evidence. Um, you can look to only look at primary evidence. Um, there's even, uh, you can create questions, MCQs, to test your knowledge. Uh, you can specify your prompt to only looking at guidelines, etc. There's heaps of gold goodies in here. Just want to show you how I might use this. So here you can see I've already I've popped in this question. What are the guidelines? All right? If I just want to know what the guidelines are, and it's going to bring me up for um, the guidelines so that I don't have to wade through a mountain of guidelines. Here you can see those numbers look good, and the references are to actual um, regional guidelines. So that's a win. You do need to check, always always check with these references that it is taking you to your locally relevant guidelines. Um, and because I put guideline in the prompt, it's only going to give me the information from the guidelines. So that's great. Here's another one. What evidence is there to support a low carb diet for adults with type 2 diabetes? diabetes? This time I haven't put guidelines in the prompt. Just want to know what have we got out there? And I thought this has all come up with very reasonable stuff. And you can see here it's referenced some great, th great things here. It also puts a little blue star of happiness if this is a leading journal. So um, that's reassuring when we're thinking about the quality of the evidence. And you can click on it, um, and you should click on it to, uh, to check that what it's saying up here is what is uh, coming down there. But I've tested quite a lot of these generative AI systems and certainly in the clinical space, uh, open evidence is performing better than any others that I've tested. So that's also reassuring, but we still um, cannot uh, close our eyes and, um, and not look uh, at the evidence behind these recommendations, right? Because the buck always stops with you, the clinician, in terms of um, the recommendations that you make to your patients. I want to show you an example of a PICO question. So this question here, right, what evidence support, I even have a spelling error in there, but it didn't matter because I still got there in the end. What evidence supports a lower, a low carb diet for adults with type 2 diabetes. I'm going to rephrase that using a, a structured PICO and see if it makes any difference to the outcomes that we get. Here you can see 
Pico, so what's my population or patient? It's an adult with type 2. Um, I is the intervention, being the low-carb diet compared to a standard diet. So there's a comparison point in there and then improved blood sugar control. That's the outcome. <laughs> and you can see here I've just asked three questions, so I've reached my limit. I'm going to have to log in. Now you can see this looks quite different. Uh, to the other output that wasn't following PICO. This one has practice guidelines and it gives a really nice summary. And I can dig a little bit deeper and get to those, the primary evidence behind that. So here are the standards. Reference one, um, yeah, you are looking for those first references to be a guideline or a standard which are built on a body of evidence and then to go to the body of evidence, generally speaking. And that all looks really useful. So you can see there are some slight differences between the way that I've structured my prompt and the outcome that I've got um, as a result of that. I would recommend following a PICO, have a little play, ask some questions in an unstructured kind of way and then use the PICO. All right, good luck and let me know in the comments if this was useful to you. Cheers.